Thanks for checking out this vector tutorial. As always, check out the bottom here for all the keyboard commands and shortcuts. For this episode, we're going to draw Bulbasaur. Before opening your programs, it's always a good idea to do sketches. And here's a look, draw and figure things out, see what you like, do research. So for this episode, I just wanted to draw Bulbasaur because he's so cute. Um, I really like this sketch down here where the head and the body were about the same size. And on this spread, again, head and body or in the bulb were all the same almost. And the one down here is cool because I like how the character is so low to the ground. For some reason, I think it's really super cute. And uh, you can do it. Let's make a color palette. I'm just going to draw some squares. And you hold Option, Drag to duplicate. Command D to duplicate it again. So this is our main color. And I'm going to use this darker shade. Maybe we'll use it later. And then I'm going to make another color for the shadows. I'm using my Super Slate 2, which is basically cyan and black. It's Pantone's color of the year, so I've been ahead of the curve for the past 10 years. <laughs> this is my favorite color that I've been using for almost every illustration I've done. For the shadow, I am going to go to Transparency, set it on Multiply around 25%. So whatever I draw, this is the shadow, can go on top of things and provide depth. And I think this color, I might go with the red. When I tweeted these sketchbook drawings, I added the Bulbasaur hashtag and got a response from this bot with this <laughs> with a little information about Bulbasaur and this little pixelated drawing, which is super cute. I might steal this. Uh, let's see. Copy. Go to Illustrator. Paste. Oh my god. There he is. That's super cute. He could sit over here and watch. <laughs> so I'm just going to start with the head and draw a circle for that. And I'm going to use my eyedropper tool and pick this color, which, I, which is already the default. And if you notice his head isn't a perfect circle, what we can do, we can stretch it horizontally. When you hold Shift C, you edit the points. So I'm going to move things around, mess with the curves a little bit, click on the point, it'll make it a corner, and then it lets you start over again. I'm going to pull out this a little bit. And the beauty of this tool, it lets you manipulate handles one at a time without it affecting the other one like this. So when you really want that sharp edge or corner, that's the tool to use. So you know what, his head looks like Squirtle. So I think I need a little bit more up top. And I'm gonna just draw some of these little horns or ears he has, just to get the idea across. Yeah, I'll do one here. And you remember, you know, when you're drawing something in three quarters, the eye or the ear that's further away is going to be a little bit smaller. And that's kind of cute. And since it's in the back, I am going to use this color here. So with the eyes and mouth, I think I'm going to use clipping masks because I want the eyeball and the tongue and the teeth to be within the shape. Hmm. 
No, I think he's a little cross-eyed too, which makes it even cuter. I don't know why. When I want to put something into a clipping mask, I don't draw everything perfectly. I just draw the thing that I might need later. So this is part of its eye here. I think it looks totally wrong, but we'll fix that later. The object you want the mask to be, bring it to the front, select all the pieces you want inside, and then hit Command-7. That sticks it in there. And you have to go back and change the color of the main shape. So bring to front. Command-7. So, and his eyes. Now, since my work is usually flat, I like to give myself a few gradients, stuff where I want to pop out a little bit to give it a little more oomph. So for eyes, I like to give it a gradient. So for here, let's select both of these, go to the gradient tool, and let's say, so I want that red to be on one end of the spectrum. And then for the other color, I want to go, just go dark with a darker red. It's super subtle, but I think it adds just a little bit to make it interesting. Let's fix these eyes here. And then for the mouth, I'm going to draw the tongue here. Draw some teeth. Bring this to the front, select everything you want inside, Command-7, there you go. I think his color is off. I think it needs to be more green. So let's try this. Nope. Nope. To change your color swatches, you click on the CMYK converter. And then I might need to add a little bit more yellow to this. Not too much. Or you could do this, hit the eye for eyedropper and then sample your reference. So I'm going to make this into a new swatch. Call it bulb sort. I'm just going to call it bulb. And then for this one, I'm just going to use that swatch and add a little bit more blue to it, add a little black. So now this is my secondary color. So I might change this multiply darker. This is what I'm going to use for shadows and even like nostrils and even at spots. So for example, I'm going to draw this shape. And then click on here to make its spots. And the reason why I like to use multiply, I'm using a color and putting it on top, which takes its own color and the color below it, gives it a little bit more harmony by being a combination of the two. So there's that. Little nostrils. So the beauty of, of Illustrator is that I can always change my mind, add things, delete things. So it's kind of perfect for me. And I think I always have to add rosy cheeks. That's just what I like. Hmm. 
So yeah, I think we have a decent face for our Bulbasaur. Now for the body, I'm just going to draw a triangle because he's so low to the ground. I'm going to do this. Boom. Send it back. And since he's the same color, we're going to try a different technique today by adding lines too. When I was in school taking animation classes, I spent an entire semester at the local zoo drawing animals and trying to understand their anatomy, trying to understand character design, really. I'm going to take a concept that we learned was add overlap. It shows volume and it shows its form. So I'm going to make this two points. So here we have some separation now from the head and the body. So I'm going to bring this forward here. And even though my style is flat, I still have to think about life drawing or how to draw the Marvel way when you're told to draw spheres and draw cones and cylinders. But after a while, you could just make it up. I think we all, we all get better at this. So here's another leg. Now, since it's in the back, I'm just going to give it this color. And for the back leg, I'm going to do one of these things where it's a digitigrade <laughs> leg. Think about um, your dog and your cat, where, where the leg is not like ours, where we're walking on our feet. They're actually walking on their toes. So if you look at this, it's thigh, chin, foot, toes. So when you're drawing an animal or an alien or a mech even, you have to, you have to think about that. Drawing a leg, you can have its thigh, its shin, and then its foot, and then its toes. Because I want the digigrade, I don't have to worry about the toes. So you have this. And you don't have to draw every single shape. I mean, you can, if you think about it more, you have the thigh, then you have the shin, and then you have the foot here. But I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw the whole thing all at once. And push this to the side. I think he, was, he needs a little bit more butt. So shift C to change the curves, the Bezier handles, and then use this one to bring it back to the point to give it a corner. So I'm gonna bring this in further. Again, cute has to be, you know, small body, big head. And let's bring this little horn thing up. So I'm going to make this the same color. And then use shadows and lines to give it its form and shape. So the shin would be in shadow. So I'm going to draw this shadow palette. And then for the thigh, I'm just, I'm like, I'm just going to draw a line. I drop this line. Also, you can use these lines to draw wrinkles. You could draw a little elbow, skin. <laughs> I don't know if there's a term for that. So there's that. I draw some little claws. Uh, it could be like little elephant feet. For this one, I'm just going to draw a triangle and give it the same color. So it's just one solid piece and for this I'm gonna give it a little bit more a little bit more of a knee here. You could draw a little swirly kneecap if you want. Oh yeah we need to draw more spots too so let's just draw some shapes. Give it that color.
our spots are too similar to our shadows, so I'm going to give this a lighter opacity. Let's go lighter. So I think this is turning out okay. Oh, don't forget the back leg. Send it to the back, sample this color. And then for the bulb, I'm not, again, I'm not familiar with Pokemon that much. Does this thing open up? Does it grow? I think vines come out of it, but I'm just going to draw all as one piece here. Just get this thing going. Oh, it looks like a soup dumpling too. Oh my God. No, now I'm hungry. And I'm going to use my favorite lime green, which is called citrus. My cat. Move this down. Kind of make it turn upward like this. Uh, this, this, this looks more accurate. So since this is the back leg, I'm going to add more shadow to it. Should these be white? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what these what the claws should be, so I'm just gonna draw something for now. And I can always go back and add to it, fix it. And I think this one, since this is the, the leg that's furthest back, we can just go full on blue. You know, I'm gonna give the front leg a little bit more definition, so I'm gonna use the line tool and just draw a line. And again, when you have lines like this, you're suggesting overlap that shows more depth to the character. I don't know, this is kind of cool. I'm kind of pleased with this. And don't forget, like when you have line, if you're using lines over here, be sure to add some here too to kind of keep everything balanced. You can even give it an outline here too. And then for the bulb, I think I'm going to give it some shadows. I'm going to draw right on top of it. And if it matches, cool. If it doesn't, that's cool too. And then select that and the bulb, send it to the back. And again, you can use lines here to draw the different leaves. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, just draw, draw. Just keep drawing. And again, I still I, I love how low to the ground he is. It makes me think of um, French Bulldogs. And maybe someday when I have a yard or a house, I could get a French Bulldog. Even though I'm a cat person, you know, I think they're kind of the most cat-like dog there is. And I love how small and muscular they are. So maybe this is why I like Bulbasaur so much. So maybe let's bring this leg down. Oh, I want to add more detail to the mouth. And what I like about his face, it reminds me of like dinosaurs, like Triceratops and Ankylosauruses that has like the pointy beak. And it still blows my mind that dinosaurs are birds or birds are dinosaurs. So here's this. So when I added a gradient to the eye, I always, I usually add a gradient to the mouth too, because it, this is the object with the most depth in my drawing. While everything is flat, I still want to have some dimension to it. So let's see. I sometimes go from a dark red to black 
to give it a lot more depth. So I'm going to flip this gradient over. Use G to direct the gradient. There you go. And now, since now the mouth has this gradient, I feel like the tongue needs one too. So from for this one, I go from pink to a, a red. If I use this one, let's go darker. Gives it more depth. And here's do that. I don't know, I'm feeling good about this Bulbasaur, so yay. I like the combination of flat shapes and line to get my little character. Since my style is flat, I mean, I don't have to have accurate shadows or accurate anything. I could just have a line be a shadow. Cool, I think I'm happy with this, believe it or not. Cool, hey, there's our little Bulbasaur. So thanks for watching this tutorial. Uh, give me a shout on social media if you have any suggestions, comments, questions, or anything. And I will see you next time. Thanks, bye.